Welcome to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I was just sort of blathering inanely in a recent Twisted Metal video. Happened to mention my love of the Tony Hawk series. Got me in the mood to play it again. And now I am playing it again. This is specifically Tony Hawk's 3. Not for any good reason besides the fact that it is the only Tony Hawk game that I happen to own a physical copy of still. Would have started with the first game, but uh, this is the only one I have on hand. Most people have seen the first two games more recently anyway, because they were recently remade, put on modern consoles. And my understanding is Tony Hawk 3 will be remade in the near future, but here we are seeing it with uh, all of its original glory, I guess. Gotta skip this cutscene, because uh, the Ace of Spades by Motorhead plays through it. And that is, uh, unfortunately, a licensed song. Gonna turn off all the music for this video, which normally would be a travesty for a Tony Hawk game. Necessary, but still very, very unfortunate. In this specific instance, it won't be that bad. Um, let's actually look at uh, the soundtrack for this game. AFI, Alien Ant Farm, CKY, of course. Um, this, I've always felt, is the worst uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater soundtrack of any of the games that I played personally. Um, obviously, Ace of Spades is by far the best song, which isn't saying much. It's one of the best songs, period. But uh, yeah, I, I don't like this soundtrack very much. So, turn it off. I will sub in uh, probably mostly Twisted Metal music, maybe a little bit of Castlevania music, just because uh, seeing the skateboarding gameplay with no music at all, fairly disturbing. So I'll fix that a little bit in editing. I did play through the game as a little refresher as Bam Margera, solely on the grounds that I knew for a fact I would never want to play as Bam Margera on recording. Never want to see that smirk again. And there he is, rapping the band Him. Band I've always hated. Um, yeah. Get out of here, Bam. I did put a beer hat on him. Did him that favor. He doesn't come with, come with that by default. I will be playing as Rune Glyphberg, who has always been my favorite skater in the entire series. Because his name is cool. Rune is a very cool name. Also, his stats are... Uh, vert uh, oriented, and that is my preferred play style. Although that doesn't matter even slightly. As soon as we complete a single level, I'm going to change all the stats completely. And that level is going to be the Foundry. But there are a bunch of other levels we will unlock after we complete the Foundry. Hopefully, uh, the recording doesn't get eaten up too much, like it did with a recent Twisted Metal video, but I will fix it in editing, editing regardless, because that's a thing I do. This is a very bare-bones level, not very interesting to look at, but it is a little more interesting than most of the first levels in uh, preceding Tony Hawk games. They usually start out with a warehouse-ish level. This one is slightly more interesting than some of the others have been. But we get very simple goals, I believe. Whoop. Gonna need a lot more stuff up there. I believe the um, trick specific goal was to do maybe a melon grab over that half pipe at the very intro. So I'm gonna head back and probably get that. After I build up a little speed here. Oh, that was an airwalk. Let's try that. There we go. Uh, yes. Get skate. That'll be very useful. Skate letters are usually laid out in such a way that they give you a little tour of the level. In this case, we are probably supposed to get them in a different order but no penalty for spelling poorly, as long as you end up with the full word at the end. 
Whereabouts is the K? I have no idea at the moment. Oh, it's back there for some reason. We should still have plenty of time to uh, break our neck and complete maybe one or two more of our goals. Let's see. I think this is the last of the switches we need to unstuck. Let's find out. Uh, that's not gonna do it. There we don't go. There's the last one. That unlocks a secret area. Not very secret at all, but every level has a secret area in this game. And uh, we won't be seeing all of them. Some of them are very complicated and pointless. Hell yeah. That's a fairly difficult one. Probably the most difficult one in this introductory level. And a very destructive one. That thing was in a real precarious position and we destroyed it. Not much left to do, except to get one more stat point. And uh, yeah, we knocked out a whole bunch of our goals. Someone who was better at the game probably could have gotten all of them in a single run there, as was the goal when you played uh, Tony Hawk games. I'm way out of practice. It'll probably take me two runs per level at the very minimum. Oh, I didn't uh, get the secret tape. That one's kind of important. But uh, as we re-enter the level, first we will get rid of all of our street skills. Screw it. Don't need any of them. We are going to max out all these, become the world's best vertical skater who uh, can't do any grinds to save their life. Won't really need to do any grinds here. Back uh, this way, actually, is the secret area. We'll take a quick look at it. And only a quick look because it is pointless. It's a bowl and there's this uh, circular spiral platform. You could ride it up for a very, very long time and eventually come to a dead end. And then you would jump off back into the bowl. It's great. I don't particularly care for that secret area. But in this upper area, we want to stay on the catwalk. Almost overshot it there. Save myself with a grind. Because over here, Got this area, and up ahead is our secret tape. There we go. Still counts, even if we kill ourselves. Uh, if we get this at an angle, we can grind up here, get a stat point. Uh, I should probably start score grinding. Oh. But I will need some more stat points, and this is where we want to do our score grinding. Basically, the level design of every Tony Hawk's game is, where's the nearest halfpipe? Because all your points are going to come from halfpipes. Even if you're a street skater, you're mostly just looking for halfpipes. Uh, grab moves are an excellent way to uh, build a very high score, but they run the risk of uh, killing you if you hold them for too long, like so. Hmm. Ten seconds left. Am I going to be able to do this? They will let me continue my score attempt after the time limit runs out. As long as I hold my combo. Lip tricks are also an excellent way to build score. Even though my lip trick modifier is terrible. That would have got us the sick goal all in and of itself. So we are one goal short. You know, I could actually grind that out really, really quickly. So I will do so and then immediately end the run once we get that. Because here's our half pipe. 
I've emptied out our switch stat, so I'm at a penalty when I'm switch-footed. We were meant to live for so much more, but Rune doesn't give a damn. Can't blame him. It should just about do it, so long as I don't kill myself here. Yep. Job well done. We are out of the foundry and on to Canada. But first, it did mention we unlocked a new uh, trick slot, special slot that was. I don't currently know how to do my specials, so I'm gonna reassign these. Uh, I like to put them such that they have opposite directional inputs, just because that's easier to remember. Up, down, it's much easier to remember than, what is this, right up? Who could ever remember right up? That is complete madness. Christ Air is another classic. If we keep it as a grab trick, we can actually hold it and uh, gain more points that way. But uh, I don't usually like doing that, so I won't. Let's put a slam a jam on there. It's a good, powerful ability. It's got a good animation. And we'll give this a, a left-right triangle. Uh, keep the skill, reassign the button input. Yeah, so we got both these on left-right triangle. One of them is a manual special, the other is a grind special. And we're out of here. Our only other choice right now is Canada. One of my least favorite levels in any Tony Hawk game ever. In general, the level design in this game is quite sparse. The levels aren't that much bigger than the levels of previous games, but they do tend to be a lot more spread out. Seems to be a way to I don't know, uh, encourage different playstyles from people who played the preceding games. Uh, I don't know how well that worked. Didn't work for me, because like I said, all I do is look for a half pipe. Once I find a half pipe, I just get my score, goals. And then I begrudgingly go through the rest of the level, see what goals I have to knock out there. But for the most part, I'm just here for the best half pipe. Almost got our skate, which only takes us through like a quarter of this level. There we go. I'm gonna want to land this. Even impress the skater along the way, but I don't think I'm gonna get the rest of that goal just yet. We got a melon grab over this. This is the blade, apparently. And the melon grab is not that. It's the other direction. Uh, that might have been angled wrong. Let's try this. Just barely landed that, but it counts. We got a guy over here with his tongue stuck to a pole. Classic comedy. Tony Hawk games have pretty uh, atrocious senses of humor. No wonder Bam Margera has been a staple of the series. Until recently, I believe he was edited out of uh, the most recent game. Rip that guy's tongue off. Do him that favor. And then over here, we can see the bully He's throwing snowballs at a cabin for some reason. All we have to do is bounce into that tree over there that has the snow on it. That'll kill him. They missed a real opportunity to give him a Canadian accent. No one here has any sort of accent. What a shame. Ah. Didn't have enough speed to get up there for uh, one last stat point, but that's fine. We had to return anyway, because there's quite a few more goals to take care of. My editing will probably be pretty loose when I slap music on this. Just because I don't want to 
take too much time to do that. But there should not be music over like loading screens and these interstitial things where they show us what goals we got and prompt us to save the game every single time. So, yeah. I'm sure no one would notice if I hadn't pointed it out. So yeah, there's this whole precarious series of platforms that you really don't even have to explore, but we're going to. There are easier ways to get to this area, though. We want to get special because that will increase our jump height. We need all the jump height we can get. Because we have to get all the way up here. If your stats, your vertical stats aren't completely maxed out like I did immediately upon starting this game, um, you can't get up here. And this is the second level of the game. They just expect you to uh, have given up on street stats at this point. But um, hmm. I wasn't up there for the half pipe, that's for sure. We have further business to take care of up there. And now I need to waste a lot of time returning to that area. It's also very unreliable. Even if you do absolutely everything right, seems like you won't always be able to get up there. The height is just the absolute maximum height that any skater could possibly get. Which again, fairly ridiculous for the second level of the game. I think we got this. Yep. And we need to continue doing things very carefully and still screw it up right at the very end. Because we need to get on the outer rail. That'll get us on the proper route to get to the secret tape. Ugh. So this one's not going to do it. Luckily, we can retry at any time. Chuck is still screaming about his tongue. Can hardly blame him. He suffered a horrible violence at our hands. But it was very funny. In the year 2001, I think? Yeah. This game definitely came out in 2001. Because there's an airport level that uh, a 2002 game probably would not have wanted to explore. It's really hard to get on that outer rail. Um, if we drown in this small uh, patch of water here, it'll drop us right into a good spot where we can get back to where we were. Drowning to save time. Okay. Can we do it? I'm actually going to take this real slow and just barely get it right. Nice. All the skaters we have to impress are in this area. We don't have enough time to get the sick goal for our score, but I don't really care too much about that. We might have just barely enough time to impress all the skaters it only takes a couple thousand points for each of them. I do need to get out of that damn bowl. That's not going to do it. Yeah. Because he didn't even see most of those points that I scored. Nothing much I can do with the rest of the time allotted. So we will start with the impressing the skaters. Guess it only matters where you land. And that you land at all. Get out of this damn bowl. Okay, thank you. I was on switch footing, so I didn't have very many opportunities to do tricks there. Try this again. That should do it. Totem Pole. Canada has a great track record with uh, its indigenous peoples. 
Ah, we have recently learned of their many years and ongoing acts of genocide. Glorious. Anyway, another skater not impressed. Ah, trying to do a lip trick. Surprisingly difficult on a curved thing there. Yeah, you love that. Lift tricks worth tons and tons of points. Much more than grinds, that's for damn sure. I think later games introduced um special lift tricks. I don't believe those exist here in Tony Hawk 3. In fact, I don't know what tricks exist in Tony Hawk 3. There should be, like, um, manual tricks. Did not mean to do that. That's another reason I assign my uh, special moves to uh, opposite directional inputs so that I do them accidentally much less frequently. Because when you do them accidentally, you're guaranteed to bail. Um, yeah, I missed a few score goals there. Once again, we can get them very quickly because the uh, best half pipe happens to be right near the starting area. And since it is so easy to do that, I'm gonna. Here's an excellent half pipe. And I can show off some special holes. There's both of Rune's signature specials. I forget if I mentioned that Rune is, I believe, a uh, staple of Scandinavian names. And my research was confused as to whether or not it was a male name or a female name. I'm assuming it's more gender neutral. But who knows? Only the Scandinavians. Pretty kick-ass name, although very common, I understand in its native countries. Basically, I'm raving about a, like, guy named Mike. Ugh, once you bail once. Tends to be a bit of a chain reaction until you get your speed back up. I'm very obviously super out of practice. Someone who is even vaguely decent at this game can get well into the millions of points in the time that I've spent here. But once we do this, we will open an additional, uh... additional special slot. Once you, uh, fully complete a level, damn it all, <laughs> you get an additional, uh, special slot. Yep. Didn't spin quite enough. I'm actually not used to my spin stat being so high. So I'm making some mistakes. Because I'm spinning too well. This should probably do us. Yeah, just barely. I'll take it. And get out of here as quickly as possible. On to our first competition. I probably should have assigned another special since I have the opportunity to do so. But it's fine. This is our first competition, which is the Tony Hawk equivalent of a boss fight. Can't do boss fights because this is really just a solo game. No direct competitors at any given time. So we're on our own. The other competitors will be off screen presumably getting their points, they'll be earning them and not just being assigned them randomly by a pernicious computer AI. That of course will be exactly what's happening, but we won't get to see it. Damn. Damn. 
Here's our ideal half pipe. Just gonna go for our special manual, just to see what it is. Honestly, I've never actually done it. Yeah, let's let's find out what it is. Um, I think we have to be in a manual. Let's, uh, nope. Yeah, I have no idea how to do it. Maybe it's uh, not a manual special at all. I honestly don't know. Bailed a few times, which hurt our score. We might not get the gold medal. Uh, what? <laughs> I have seen the uh, AI competitors get like 98s randomly assigned to them, but this time none of them broke 90. I don't know what's going on here. Lucky for us, I guess, because uh, I did not do well there. We'll try and get a good score here. And see if that actually gets us a gold. <laughs> we already doubled our score from last time. This is how uh, decent players of this game easily get into the millions in under a minute. I won't be doing that. Do the same lip trick, which makes it worth less points, but that's fine. I believe with the score as high as we have it, we are guaranteed to get a 99.9 .9 here. We'll find out. We'll find out now, I guess. There's no point in getting a uh, further score. Yeah, full 99.9s. That should guarantee us a gold. Doesn't matter how high anyone else scores at this point. So, we will go get our skill points. Completely throw this last round, because we don't need it. The ones up on the, the power line there are kind of difficult to get. I don't know if I'll actually be able to get them. So far, not doing very well. Luckily, the drivers are courteous to our recklessness, not running us over. They won't be so kind in future levels. Another easy to get stat point right here. Yeah, really hard to get up on those damn power lines. Oh well. There's a nice easy one. There we go. Good way to end our comp. By completely beefing the final round. Still gets us the gold. Cause no one could touch our middle score. Two new levels. And a few more stats. On to suburbia. Anything to delay the inevitable of going to the airport. Only this uh, PS2 version and the PS1 version, they were released on the same day. They came out, um, I think, like a week before 9-11. And then all other versions of this game came out in 2002. Hey, 420. Hilarious. There were a lot of versions of this game. They all have like secret characters and stuff. Different secret characters. Here's the Thin Man. He needs a key. We'll try and help him out. Uh oh. Saved myself. Then killed myself. Uh, we will go back to the starting area, which has this uh, ice cream truck. 
That one won't stop for anything or anyone. It will run you over. And it's not very detailed. Not too many jokes. When they could have crammed a few in. The K is on top of this building here. Easiest way up is this ramp. They got a weird mishmash of aesthetics here in suburbia. There's a trailer park, which has been retrofitted into a skate park. And then there's actually vaguely nice houses. I don't know what they were going for here. Um, what is the trick we have to do? Yep, that's not gonna get us there. We can check our goals at any time. We need a nose grab, which quite intuitively is up and circle. There we go. Now we just need our E. <laughs> ah, some people I know definitely need their E. And I'm one of them. Um, real, real inside joke there. Uh, only got 20 seconds left. Over here, cap things off. You'll find an ax. Then we will return to the Thin Man and uh, hand it to him. Bit of a strange key for a bit of a strange guy. And on our next run, we will uh, see what's behind that gate. Five pumpkins, restore power, and then get a whole bunch of score. Um, I don't want to max out my spin just yet. I'm already thrown off enough as it is. Instead of going right to the uh, Thin Man's house, let's smash some pumpkins. Uh, glad I survived that at least. Then I got socked by the guy grilling. Pumpkins are in all sorts of weird places around here. Got on top of this building, which means you can clear the power lines. Very demanding homeowner. Once we fix that, he can watch TV. We are the people's hero. Now, what else we gotta do? There's the thin man. But we gotta smash more pumpkins. I got my priorities straight. Let's see. I know there's a good way to get on top of this wall here. That'll do it. Oh. I got the deck. Every level has a deck that you can uh, use to customize the underside of your board that you can't see. What fun. Obviously in future Tony Hawk games, I would be obsessed with that. But in this game, it's not very exciting. The uh, creative character in this game is also pretty lackluster. Oh, here's a missed opportunity for a joke. Utopia turns to TP? Uh, TPI? I don't know what it's supposed to be. Last pumpkin. And oh darn, I wasted all my time that I was supposed to spend going to the Thin Man's house, completing other goals. Ah well. That means the Thin Man's house gets its own entire replay. And it deserves it. Let us give it all the attention it deserves right now. It's right behind the starting area. Right on in. 
and there we go. Suddenly it's horrifying. We get a bunch of scary gaps. I didn't explain it yet, but the blue text is a gap. When you do something specific in a level, you uh, will sometimes get a gap. And uh, it gives you a couple of points and adds to your multiplier, more importantly. We can climb all the way to the top of the house and accomplish not much of anything up here. And it's really difficult to stay on this weird half pipe that shouldn't be here. Yeah, I've, I've had my fun here. Uh-oh. Accidentally jumped all the way out of the house. My bad, there was much more to do in there. Easy enough to get back in, though. Scary graveyard with skeleton hands. Ghost voices yelling at us. And up here, the real horror of flashing lights. Sorry, I should have warned you first. Also, millions of 2D bats. And a haunted coffin. We're all menacing this poor fella here. Sorry, random guy in a trucker hat. But before we run out of time, there's our secret tape. Got that. Um, I probably should have done some more score grinding. Might not get our score goals. But we'll try. Yep, definitely not gonna get them. <laughs> oh well. We don't need them. Only one we missed was the sick goal. We certainly have enough goals completed. I'm not even gonna bother going back and grinding that out. It's not interesting enough to watch. I will reduce our spin to increase our street stats a little bit. And just eat that switch penalty. Cause I don't need it. One, two, three. Um, hmm, I skipped the airport. That honestly was not my intention. <laughs> I do kind of hate the airport, but uh, I guess we'll return to it after this competition. The rules are the same every time, so we don't need to see those. Skater Island is fairly strange. Not so much this part. This is classic uh, competition stuff. Strange part we'll see later on, once I throw one of the uh, further heats. Because we're going to have to do quite a bit of exploration before we can see the weirdness that awaits us. Accidentally heading towards it now. Don't want to do that. What I do want to try and do is break through the ceiling, because you can do that from this half pipe. But it's obviously pretty inconsistent. Don't want to spend all my time on this one combo. Ah, I'm on switch, so I wasn't going to get it. Had a little bit of a height penalty. Eh. I broke 90 somehow. Did any of the other skaters? No. <laughs> Don't know why. Anyway. We will head back to where we just were and ignore the half pipe that I liked so much last time. And instead, turn around, head that way. Accidentally jumped over what I was trying to get to. Apparently it doesn't count if you uh, grind it that way. Didn't know that. So we won't get too much speed as we approach the... <laughs> Pirate flag. Gonna need more speed than that, though. There we go. We have opened up the outside area, which is right over here. 
once we step outside. A pirate ship blows a hole in the wall. There is so much nonsense out here. Cannon fire, sharks, an entire pirate ship. So much to see and do out there. It's utterly ridiculous. But going out there is not really conducive to getting a high score. I'm gonna do it nonetheless, because I mean, it's really, really, really cool. But it's pointlessly overdesigned. There is no reason to be out here. It is just not even to your benefit to do so. But the option exists. So I must do it. Not that this is a very thorough playthrough. But thorough enough, apparently. Yeah, I'm definitely going back in for the rest of my points. Otherwise, I won't be getting them. This pool here kind of sucks. The best pool is all the way in the back. Right near where we started, actually. Not really going to have time to get there. Just going to have to casually land a... 150,000 point uh, goal here. Yeah, that's not going to do it. So this, this competition's over. <laughs> ah, well. Oh, because I had to show off the pirate ship. I did want to break through the roof, though. There it is. Hope I didn't uh, oversell it, because it was kind of unimpressive. I remember Tony Hawk won in one of the competitions. You could also break through the roof. And it was pretty cool. I would like to replay Tony Hawk 1. If I had my druthers, that, that'd be what I was playing right now, but... Instead, all I had was Tony Hawk 3. Which is still a very good installment in the Tony Hawk series, but... It's clear they're running out of steam with this formula and had to thoroughly revamp it in future games. And that they did. Tony Hawk 4 is more of an open world sort of game and that uh, paved the way for Tony Hawk's Underground. Really breathed new life into the series. made it quite a bit better, in my opinion. That said, I do like this format of the um, Tony Hawk games for my purposes of just sitting down and playing through the whole thing in one sitting, which is something I like to do occasionally. And uh, the early Tony Hawk games in particular, they have a very um, twisted metal design philosophy the way they're just sort of mundane areas that you would see in real life. Really more archetypes than specific places. And uh, on those archetypes, they added a bunch of gameplay mechanics that would be conducive to your time there as a pro skater or a souped up murder car. <laughs> It's pretty cool. One of the reasons I love my Tony Hawks and my Twisted Metals. Um, if this gets us in first place, which it doesn't, but nonetheless, I'm throwing this last round. We've spent enough time in Skater Island. Not gonna get the gold, and I don't care. Almost didn't get the uh, bronze. But then I did. Uh, yeah. Back to the airport. Technically, a character is only complete when you get all the goals with them and all gold medals. All goals, all golds. 
but there's a lot of tedium and grinding involved with doing that. Obviously, if you're like a speedrunner at the game, it's basically effortless for you, but I am very, very out of practice. Oh no, these screw-ups forgot their tickets. We're gonna have to fix their mistake. So before we do anything, I'm going to leap over the ticket counter here and show off this baggage claim because we could skate through it. If we did that though, there would be a full screen strobe effect that is just really horrifying to the eye. Like I have no problem with flashing lights usually. That particular strobe effect is blinding to me. It like actually hurts to look at. So not gonna subject anybody to that. So unfortunately we are missing that secret area, but I will show it off from the other side later on. These were the days when you could just put a generic warning that in theory video games can cause uh, seizures and then just call it a day. Hope that that was enough to uh, save any epileptics who might be interested in your game, which clearly it wasn't. If you bail at any point while you're holding the tickets, you will drop them for some reason. And if you go through the um, body scanners, they will void your tickets, which makes even less sense. But I didn't do any of that, so we got the tickets. Now some random civilian is knocking me over again and again. Um, I mentioned I didn't really like this level, and that's because it is a downhill level. Pretty much every Tony Hawk game, it seems, has to have a downhill level since the very first game. And um, they're rarely uh, very beloved. Don't know if I'll have enough time to get over here. Just barely did not have enough time. Won't matter too much because we will have to go all the way to the end of the downhill section. Over and over again. So we'd have, been, we'd have ended up there regardless. Uh, three more stat points. And back into the airport. Don't have to worry about the tickets this time. So we can start with the pickpockets. There's one there, there's one in front of me, getting away. Not so fast. Wow. That was actually pretty impressive. But, didn't save him in the end. Security guards down here, not doing their job, so we gotta do it. Over here are the escalators, over which we have to air walk. Air walk is merely a down grab. We do have to not kill ourselves though. Gonna need a little more speed here. That should do it. Nope. So we'll boneless, air walk, land it. Job well done. There's another stat point over here. I don't know how to get to it though. Not too worried about it. There are, in the bathrooms here, two pickpockets. And this is a bathroom. I don't know why you would have bathrooms that are completely open like this. Kind of horrifying really, but... Fortunately, we don't have to use them. Just those poor civilians who are getting robbed in this incredibly dangerous airport. Ah, I was going for the stat point, but I missed it. Last pickpocket is right over here. Kill him. Still don't have time to get the uh, flags, but we do have time to get up here 
and very slowly grind our way to the secret tape. And then crash, fall, and get a bunch of goals completed. Nice. Oh, I forgot to show off the secret area while I was back near the escalators. Luckily, I was planning to make another return trip anyway. So let's do that. Go right to that spot. Do a few grinds along the way. Just for score. Do want to land that. But we will waste a little bit of time here. Showing this section up here off. If I grind up here, I can look at the helipad. That's what the uh, baggage claim will get you to. And then you can grind on the blades of the helicopter and it'll take off. It's wonderful. It's actually one of the least interesting secret areas in the entire game. Unsurprisingly, for this fairly lackluster level. So yeah, the, uh, the PS1 version and the um, N64 version, they had their own specific level, which was called Downhill. And it was just another downhill level. I believe it is widely considered one of the worst levels in the entire Tony Hawk series. But it was nonetheless completed and tossed in an inferior version of this game. Inferior because it was released on the same day as the PS2 version. So rather pointless to play it at all. While we were grinding the flags there, we could see right out into the, um, the tarmac. Which would have been a great section to be able to skate through. But you cannot skate through it. Kind of unfortunate. Could have grinded on the planes and jumped off their tails. Had all sorts of skating fun. But it was not to be. Look at that. That would have been a much better secret area than the helipad. Ah well. No more. Backseat game dev for me, because we are done with the airports. On to Los Angeles. This is also a fairly sparse level, but it's flat. So we could do some ground tricks if we were the sort of skater who did that. I really do think the more spread out design of all the levels was supposed to get you to do more grinding and whatnot, but no. No thank you. Even more like a Twisted Metal game, we are going to have to help the LAPD apprehend a criminal. Because they ain't going to do it. You got a spell skate here. It actually does take you through most of the level to do so. It's kind of awkward to trick into these things. Pretty much have to uh, bail in order to do so. After a very short hop. There we go. The A is somewhere behind me, but the T is right in front of me. And I just barely missed it. We'll get there. As promised. Apparently the random pedestrians are giving me uh, a bonus multiplier here that I didn't realize was a thing. If you're wondering why I'm not skitching here, 
It's because that was not invented until Tony Hawk 4. In this game. And I don't have too much else to do. No point in score grinding, because I definitely won't get the 6 score. Let's instead look at the car wash. And this bridge here, which is on a very shaky foundation. Hollywood signs in front of us. Let us manual across the Walk of Fame, which has no names on it. And pass the trailers into the movie set where they will throw us out. Just to show that off. Just knocked out two goals there, I think. Enough to get the next level. But we'll get a few more goals here in LA. Let's start that earthquake. And I guess we'll do that one foot Japan. Slightly more complicated uh, trick than the others we've been asked to do. The earthquake. Fairly awkward to figure out the first time, but you need to grind four specific rails. They are parallel to each other, but they don't form like a nice square like I feel they should. Let's see you tear it up. But nonetheless, that did it. Oh. There's the bridge falling down. You can barely see it from the corner of our eye. But there we go. We ruined everything for everybody. But the car chase continues. That was not the one foot Japan. It is two directional inputs and the uh, circle button. I figured it out eventually. Back to the car wash. Someone is screaming for help, and we're the only one who can do it, because the LAPD is busy. So we have to help the pedestrians, or random civilians. This is a motorist trapped on the bridge. Get ourselves out of Switchfoot, so we don't suffer a penalty. How are we going to save this guy? Not by falling off the bridge, that's for sure. We might have barely enough time to save him. Not looking like it. Nah, we'll retry. Get a full time limit going. Yeah, the time limit is actually kind of pointless since you can just retry infinite times. It seems to be designed for speedrunners to challenge themselves to complete the whole game in the bare minimum number of free tries. In theory, you could complete this entire game in like 20 minutes. I don't know if that's actually possible, but if it is, I'm sure some speedrunner has done it. Ah, the momentum just really does not want me to stay on that bridge. Also, it's really difficult to get on the bridge in the first place. As demonstrated, I found the most reliable method for doing it, but it's still not 100% reliable. Normally, I don't like to grind my way up there, but... Desperate times. Okay. Best laid plans at the moment. Technically worked. There we go. We grinded him to death. But his sacrifice did stop that criminal. Uh, hooray? 
Uh, I'm going out of bounds at this point. Where does this take us? I think we've got enough time to get back on the bridge and accomplish one more goal. Get out of switch. All the way over here. We got it. Nice. I don't know what busted cherries refers to there. Something off screen probably exploded. I don't know. We got everything except for the score goals which are the least interesting, so I'm actually not even going to bother to go back and get them. Just going to move on to Tokyo, the final level of the game. Don't pay any attention to the fact that there's another entry below it. That of course means it's a competition, because competitions are boss fights. Gotta end with a boss fight. They draw a lot of attention to the blimp in the opening cutscene there. Which is weird, because the blimp doesn't really do anything. Probably should, but instead, this is the interesting area that is really, really obscenely difficult to get to. Gotta get back up there though, and immediately fall back off. This will almost certainly take quite a few tries. Not to bail, but... Ugh. Screwed up my trajectory so bad. I wasted a lot of time. I don't think I have enough time to actually do the thing at this point. Yeah, that was a waste. But as you can see, what I'm trying to do is very hard. So, while I am wasting all this time, I will draw your attention to a Let's Play that I like a lot. It is of the game Skate 3. Thus, why I'm bringing up in a Tony Hawk playthrough. The thing about Skate 3 is, it is a horribly busted game. Unlike the Tony Hawk games, which tended to be very professional and well-made, Skate 3 is a glitchy, disastrous mess. I seem to recall the first Skate being actually pretty well-made. I never actually played it myself. But it was intended to be the Tony Hawk killer. I don't know how well it turned out to be, but by Skate 3, it was entirely off the rails. Total mess. And there's a Let's Play of it by a guy named Two Thumbs Pete and his wife. And um, they're very, very funny. And they show off a whole lot in that game, including pretty much all the glitches. So if you want to see a skater fall through the ground and then be slingshotted into space on command, because that's just the thing you can do in that game rather easily, I highly, highly recommend that LPE. It's hilarious. So I've once again wasted too much damn time. So what I'm trying to do is get adjacent to that damn blimp. Although, like I said, what I'm trying to do has nothing to do with the blimp. It just should have something to do with the blimp. Believe it or not, I practiced this quite a bit. I was able to get it done, uh, not consistently, but... Uh, at all, which is not how I'm able to do it now. Millimeter away from the bar I need to grind.
So we are exactly where we want and need to be. Just need to bonus up there and still not make it for some reason. Like I said, I did everything right there. Not right enough for this game. And I have no idea why this secret area even exists. It is totally useless to the competition and to you, the player. But what we need to do is grind that incredibly high rail. Way, way, way up above us. That's not gonna get us there. Right where we need to be again. Millimeter away. Don't know what I'm doing wrong. This worked in practice. Ugh. Now I don't know why I can't get up there. I do like that our character can turn 90 degrees in midair. That's a skill you have to learn if you're going to be a skater. Hey, I did it. Finally. It was all worth it. See that mild destruction. What we really want to see, though, is in here. Manual's not going to get us in there. There we go. It's the cyber outer space world that just exists in Tokyo. Yeah, I don't know what they're going for. Mildly racist ori orientalism here. But um, the first game ended in Roswell, so they had to do like a ridiculous space thing here in this game. And this was the best they could come up with. Once again, the game was in desperate need of just a fairly thorough reboot. Anyway, I am going to just completely end this run, rather the competition, and retry it. Because obviously we're not, we're not getting any place in this one. I don't think I mentioned at all that, um... There are three different configurations for uh, the skate letters in each level. And um, the gap-specific um, goals that I showed off. Like when you uh, do the one-foot Japan over the, the transfer there. That will be different depending on which character you play as. So I could, in theory... Uh, revisit this game as a different character and show off very slightly different goals. Which is something, I guess. It's not much. Not a good enough excuse to revisit the game. This one playthrough is probably enough. There it is. I had a gut instinct that uh, our special was a, um, a lip special. And indeed it was. There we go, we scored very, very high. It's super exciting. Still got second place, like I said. RNG can be a real killer here for no good reason. Getting the gold on this competition is actually really hard. I've already screwed up my favorite line. So this will probably be an even lower scoring run than the last one was. Up here, you can see behind the billboard is a secret half pipe. Maybe I can get us up there. It's entirely pointless, even more pointless than the secret area I spent forever unlocking. Yep. 
We'll just get a good look at it, because I don't know why it even exists. Uh-oh. I did too many tricks. I'm just going to end this run. Because we got one third run in order to get a decent score. That one started off on the wrong foot in every possible way. There we go. Much better. That's more like it. Although you can get like well into the hundred thousands there. Ugh. Keep accidentally doing an extra trick. I often don't mean to. If you press like one button three times, it'll give you like that triple kickflip. Which counts as a different trick from a kickflip. And thus is worth many more points. But it takes a lot longer. So you gotta prepare. Gotta land this. And get another combo going. I was hoping to do a special in there, but I'm definitely not gonna have enough vertical height to do that. And yeah. This should hopefully at least get us third place, though. I'd be shocked if it didn't. Yep. Nice, safe third. Good enough for me. Oh, a shocking twist. We unlocked another level. That actually was a really, really cool surprise the first time I played this game. Because in previous Tony Hawk games, after you complete the last competition, it's just roll credits. In this game, you unlock a whole nother level with its own, its own goals, and it's just a real fully designed level. It's much smaller than uh, previous levels, but that is kind of a good thing. It takes us back to the style of uh, Twisted Metal 1 and 2. Twisted Metal. Tony Hawk's 1 and 2. <laughs> Which I like. And plenty of havoc to wreak while we're here. Impressing the Neversoft girls is quite difficult. I might not get that goal. Uh, I'm not high enough to get that S. But now I am. Even with that bail, I can do it pretty easily. Ugh. And I screwed it up anyway. Yeah, this level's fairly difficult. I'm making it harder than it needs to be. But it's a victory lap of sorts. There we finally go. The K is over here. Yeah, they do a real good job giving you the, the tour of the place. Ah, can't believe I missed that. Try this again. Yep, just gotta go dead on. Um, I don't know what the gap specific trick is. Goal is. There's like three different words you need to learn to play this game, and I keep getting them mixed up. Oh, here's a really, really easy goal. All you gotta do is wall grind that specific spot, and it raises the ferry. Even the guy is incredulous that that worked. Uh oh. For some reason, it's there's supposed to be a netting in the front of the ship that you can grind on to get that T, but it's gone. So I'm a letter short. 
Oh well. The E is actually very hard to get, so... In this next run... <laughs> I will start by getting the E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once we get the E, we'll know we're on a good, solid pace. The easiest way to do that is head right over here. Because you have to sort of leap off the rail. Or do that. Not leap off the rail at all. I lied to you. Is the net out here? No. Weird. Apparently bringing in the ferry takes away the net. I did not know that. But we can still suicide our way into that T. And head back up to the top of the ship. Actually, let's not do that just yet. First, break in here. Bust up the museum. Breaking the display cases is not necessary. But, grinding this is... Because it breaks those, freeze the propeller. We almost didn't murder that guy, but then we did. Oh, there we go, there's the safety net. Now it all makes sense. more hilarious jokes going on in the background. You probably can't even hear them. Because they're very echoey and quiet. Still got half a minute to get the letters we've gotten before. Just take a nice leisurely stroll around the ship. I forgot how difficult this letter can be. I think I got it. I certainly don't. Hmm. Where? Ugh, oh, it was on the other side of the lifeboat. Ridiculous. Well, we know where it is. And, uh, I don't care to show it off. Screw it. This is not a 100% run anyway. Let us first, uh, not do that. Look at our goals. I don't want to see the whole movie, so. We'll check our goals from here. Invert the high wires. I legitimately do not know how to do that. I know the invert is down triangle. I don't know where the high wires are though. Oh well. Impress the Neversoft girls, I don't care too much about that. I do care about the secret tape. So we will start with that. Easiest way to do that is... Behind us. Uh, not there though. Want to get back to where we started. All the way back. Grind uh, that string of flags. Nope, not that one. Little higher. And this will take us right over to this thing. Don't even know what it is. And I screwed it up. Drowning dropped us right where we need to be though. If we grind multiple times, it'll take us there faster. And off we go. Damn it all. I had time to get back there, but why bother at that point? I wonder if those are the high wires that I'm supposed to invert. Apparently not. 
Ugh. It's a good thing I've already showed off most of what I need to, because, uh, I am fading here in this last level. We'll just carry this grind all the way to the end. Secret tape is above me somewhere. Right up there. Got it. And we got a nice vista to do some tricks. Nice. This one, this Neversoft girl is incredibly hard to impress, so I'm not even gonna try. I'm just gonna break these cakes. Happy 4th of July, y'all. And happy, uh, whatever English people celebrate. And then a generic cake. We'll destroy that one again so that it can be replaced immediately. Last thing I want to show off about this level is the greenhouse. This is a very fancy ship such that it includes a greenhouse. But, uh, yeah, that's all we really needed to see of Tony Hawk's 3, I think. Very fun game. Probably the least of the classic style Tony Hawk games. Obviously, Tony Hawk 1 and 2 are still very, very good. But, uh, honestly, I still love Tony Hawk 3 as well. But the weak soundtrack and spread out level design sort of weakens the overall experience. Still definitely worth a revisit. When they remake it and put it on a modern console, you should probably buy it. But for now, I do believe we are done with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. To wrap up the video, I guess we will go through the roster of skaters. Look at these old classics. Rune Glyphberg, obviously my favorite. But Tony Hawk. He looks just like that guy on Twitter that I see all the time. What a weird coincidence. Uh, Steve Caballero. Kareem Campbell. Yep. All these familiar faces if you played any Tony Hawk game. Oh, this one's a little less familiar. Darth Maul killing the shop owner. And create a skater. <laughs> yep, this game, like all Tony Hawk games, has a bunch of ridiculous bonus characters. And I've only unlocked the one. Let's see the rest using cheats. So if we type in Yo Homies, it's easy to remember at least. We will get to see all the secret characters. So who else we got? He plays this guy. Decapitated corpse with a giant eyeball for a head. Terrible stats. Even if you get all the stat points in the game, you couldn't possibly max them out. You're supposed to be bailing a lot if you unlock him. The Demoness, obviously I would have played as her. If it wouldn't have completely broken the game. But she has perfect stats. You have to complete the game with like... 40 or, or 24 characters, I think, in order to unlock her. But she's really cool. And we got a uh, surfer. That's pretty hilarious. Obviously, uh, the publisher was trying to promote their series of uh, surfing games. Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer. Hey, you got any change? Ollie the Magic Bum, hilarious. Pretty sure he was in the first game. Then we got some cops that you could play as. 
in case we didn't help the LAPD enough at this point. And Wolverine. Then Darth Maul. He's the first one you unlock. All you gotta do is complete the game with one character. And by complete, I mean all goals, all golds. And there you go. I would definitely like to also play through Tony Hawk 1 and 2 in the same style. I would just have to purchase them in order to do that. So it is cost inefficient and time inefficient. I'd also have to practice those games before I did that. But I will probably do that anyway because I enjoyed this game so much. If I crack the code, I could also play through Tony Hawk 4 and Tony Hawk's Underground. Uh, Disney's Skating Adventure or whatever it's called. The BMX Triple X, all those great games. But uh, that's a little ambitious at the moment. Maybe I will see you later for more Tony Hawk games. Maybe this was a disastrous mistake, but I enjoyed it. And thanks for watching.